Hi everybody, so I'm going to show you what the problem is with this toilet and the problem with this toilet is that it won't flush. Most of the time when you attempt to flush it nothing happens. I'll just show you what so you see you press it and basically nothing's happening at all so uh, this is uh, obviously a two-part toilet you've got the toilet bit itself and then you've got the basin bit at the top which is the bit that we're now going to have a look inside of So I've just took the lid off the top there and as you can see we've got various parts inside the toilet. I just want to start off on the left side here with this pipe that's sticking out at the top. Um, that is your overflow pipe and the water sits at a level um, just below that. A little marker there if you can see on the side of it um, and that's the top level mark. It's about an inch and a half below the level of the overflow so water should never go above the overflow so that's your overflow um, and then here in the middle it looks like one part but if you look closely it's actually two parts um, at the back end there where my uh, screwdriver is pointing that part there is called the fill valve now what that does is that's the bit that fills your toilet up with water when you flush it the water comes in and fills that up you can normally hear it fill up so it uses that bit there it's called the fill valve to fill it now the bit that we use to flush with on our handle here um, goes back there and as you can see it goes into that unit there now that is called a siphon um, it's s-i-p-h-o-n siphon um, now what that is that's a separate part and if we look from this way you can probably see better um, like the overflow it's got um, a mounting in the bottom of the toilet um, that goes in there in fact the overflow has a mounting in the bottom of the toilet the siphon has a mounting in the bottom of the toilet as does the fill valve so we have three things there um, one for obviously taking the water any excess water out one for putting water in and the siphon in the middle there which is the bit that pushes the water into the actually the toilet part itself when we flush the handle right now nothing's happening uh, and what that should do it should be one clean flush and that siphon should get rid of all the water out but it's not so there's generally two faults you get with this you either get that the toilet won't fill um, properly which usually is this the fill valve but it's not the fill valve in this case that's the problem it is the siphon here that's the problem now luckily siphons are pretty standard um, to buy and uh, looking at that how much would you think that's going to cost to replace now if I told you you can buy them for about five pound anything from five pound upwards five pound for a really cheap one and you're probably looking 20 pound for a really expensive one so you're not talking a great deal amount of money to replace that siphon um, if you want to do it yourself you can do and i'll explain to you now how we're going to do it because i've got to do it basically so unfortunately to replace this particular type of siphon this top here on the toilet has got to come off so it's quite a big job to do some of these siphons have got detachable parts so the bit that goes into the toilet bit there is detachable from the other bit um, and you can actually sort of replace one part and not the other on this it's one complete unit so the entire siphon is going to have to be replaced so how we're going to get the toilet off here and what we're going to do so the first thing we need to do is to turn the water off to the toilet so we don't want any more water coming in here so basically that's the fill 
fill valve there. So if we go underneath the toilet here, we can see where the water supply comes in to this particular toilet. And as luck would have it, there's a little isolator screw there, if you can see underneath. As long as that's working, I should be able to turn the isolator screw and that should turn the water off. Now the way I can test that is quite simply by trying to flush the toilet or pressing on the siphon. And if that water valve is off, then no water will come into the toilet. So that's the first thing I've got to do. I've got to turn the water off. So that's the water turned off. Then we need to empty the toilet. So empty the sorry the top here, not the toilet itself. We need to empty. We need to empty this out of water here. So what I can do is just get something small like a uh, margarine tub or an old cup or something, and get it out. Of course, if your toilet flushes a bit, you can flush a bit in. If not, just empty it out. You're going to need to empty that all that water out. So I'm going to use something like a margarine tub or a cup. I'm going to get it out as much as I can and then you're going to be left with a bit in the bottom. So, you know, use something like an old rag or an old sponge to get all of the water out of there. You need all the water gone, every last bit out of there. Um, so, yeah, you get to the bottom, use an old sponge or something rag, get it all out so you've got all the water out. So now you, once you've got all the water out of there, we've then got to take the screws out and um, we've got to get it out. Of course, we've got three fittings to get off there. We've got the um, overflow, we've got the siphon and we've got the valve underneath. Now, as you can see, my one I'm working on here has got one screw in it there. It looks like it's seen better days. There's no screw in the other side. Now, that's just the screw there on the top. If we look underneath, you normally have, there you go, a screw underneath. Now, again, looking at that, uh, they are usually these wing nut screws and there's one either side that holds the basin top to the toilet. Uh, so normally you can do them with an adjustable spanner. They always are generally these type of wing nuts. So you undo both of those each side as well. And basically what we've got to do then is disconnect that um, water supply there. And at the other side there, we've got to disconnect the overflow. Uh, the middle bit, we don't actually uh, disconnect, physically disconnect, because once we've removed um, the overflow and we've disconnected the fill valve on the right there, and we've took all our screws out, this unit here will actually just lift off, totally lift off. So... That's the plan of action on how we're going to do it. So, shall we put a time lapse video on and you can watch me do it? Of course, this is then we've got to replace that particular faulty part once we've got it all out. But, yeah, let's crack on with this job. Let's get this toilet repaired. So, the first job I've got to do is take the top off the tank and do a few test flushes on the toilet to see what happens. I now need to empty the tank. I'm using a, a small little tub to empty the tank there into the sink next to it. Lucky this is speeded up because this does take some time to empty, even though I actually flushed it first, so there wasn't a lot of water left in it. Next thing I've got to do is get a sponge in there and get all the remaining water out of the bottom of the tank. So in a second you'll see me get to uh, grab a sponge and get the last uh, little bits of water out of that tank. There we go with the sponge. Not a lot left in the bottom, just a little bit left in the bottom of the tank so it doesn't take too long. So now unscrewing the water inlet pipe joint which is on the right hand side underneath the toilet where the water comes in to fill the tank and 
I'm now just looking at the bolts that uh, hold the toilet, hold the tank to the toilet and uh, getting ready to unscrew those. There's one on each side, so I'm doing the right hand side first. It can be a bit tricky you now, I need a pair of pliers on them. And same the other side, I'm also unscrewing the overflow pipe is on the left hand side of the toilet from the toilet at the bottom there there's a uh, joint pipe joint for it trying it with uh, the adjustable pliers uh, but it's so awkward in that corner there it, the pliers just aren't really going in properly very tricky to do try to span it and everything adjustables and just couldn't get the movement in that corner if it was away from the wall a bit, it would move easily. Um, in the end, after much uh, attempting to do that, I realised it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> I couldn't do them with the pliers. And then I had a genius idea that uh, the gloves I've got um, have actually got very good grips on them. So in a second, I'm going to get my uh, really good gloves with a very tight grip on. And... Um, Let's go and try and undo it with a pair of gloves on. The last remaining spanner, and I think I give up after this with the uh, spanners because it just wasn't working. Couldn't get any spanners in there at all, or adjustables. So it's time to give up with them and move to the, gl the gloves, which I got from B&Q. These are quite cheap ones, but they're really, really good grip on them. Uh, and I was able to uh, unscrew it. The next bit is unscrewing that screw there on the wall that's holding the toilet in. Now um, that screw actually had started to deteriorate so um, the hole was actually bigger than the screw. So I realised when I tried to unscrew it, I didn't actually need to unscrew it because it will actually just come off. It will just slide off. Few, uh, more slightly adjust adjustments underneath the basin there to get the uh, remaining screw out so I can lift it out. I think I'd unscrewed it but not fully got it out. It's a lot different when it's in the fast motion. <laughs> Actually took a lot longer in the real time. that uh, screw finally uh, coming out now and I can get ready to remove the tank from the toilet itself and there you go it comes off nice nice and easy so now we're looking at the coupling kit there and that black thing is the washer rubber washer that I need to remove Not particularly worn but it uh, needs removing and replacing so now I need to get that large plastic nut off it's a clamping nut it's uh, quite big so you're not going to get a spanner that fits that unless you've got some really really big spanners first off I'm going to attempt to do it by hand with the old trusty uh, good grip gloves fortunately it's just not happening and it won't won't undo by hand it's time to resort to some tools and run down to the garage and get a rather large uh, wrench out of the garage like that one there adjustable wrench and that just about fits across the nut and you can uh, put it across the knot and turn it. It was very very tight on this one. 
as it should be really there you go I'm able to uh, unscrew the knot there's the metal part of the clamping kit behind there which I'm holding in my hand and then behind that there's also um, like a rubber seal type of a washer as well I'll point that out to you in a second when I've got this uh, nut off so there we go the metal bit comes off and there you see at the back we need that part so we need to keep that you don't get that in the new kit that uh, rubber washer at the back so pull that to one side and keep it safe so now to get the new coupling kit, I'll put the links in the description below. There we go, there's the new coupling kit. You get the rubber washer, the backing plate, and um, the two um, bolts and nuts and washers. More about those later, but this is, this is the bit we need to get ready now. Of course, we obviously need to put the new um, siphon in place first but I'm just unpacking that ready so flip, the, flip, flip the tank over and the blue bit in the middle is the siphon bit which we just need to pull out and unhook it from the handle and the nut the little screw there on the handle that I'm trying to unscrew and it won't come out whatsoever because it's because uh, it's been in water it's just too tight so get the old adjustable uh, adjustables out and just uh, unscrew that like that and it'll come out nicely it's now time to uh, unhook the little pull lever and then we can get the old siphon out and remove it like so also clean the tank out, get rid of any bits of rubbish that are in the bottom of the tank. This had some plumber's mate stuck to the side of it, which is like putty type stuff. So uh, clean all that out. And we can now get ready and fit the new siphon, which just drops into the hole below. turn it over turn the tank over and there we go we push the pipe through now we need that first washer that we took out the seal washer and I'm going to put that on now like so you need one hand at the back to push the siphon down and your other hand to push that seal washer on and go round it by your hand um, it should just fit in perfect but go round and push it on so that it is in place properly and it is actually not going to move anywhere it, just, it should just clip on you should feel it as you're pushing it around it clips down the grooves of the pipe and you want it all the way pushed around like I'm doing with my hand there pushing it round all the way round and it's in place correctly best to take your time with this make sure it's pushed back correctly now we've got to get the metal the new metal coupling plate and put that into position on top of that uh, pipe there sitting on top of the washer like that and of course screw on the new nut don't use the old stuff use the new nut start it off by hand And then of course, you guessed it, we're gonna to have to use the big adjustable wrench. Once you've done it by hand first, make sure it's on properly, make sure it's straight. Like so, make sure it looks perfectly straight. Get the big adjustable and uh, Let's get that tightened up. Nice 
nice and tight. We need to now fit the new rubber washer. Like so, on top of the pipe. And there you go, that's how it goes on. So the next bit is the tricky bit is attaching the flush handle there to the siphon. Uh, mine, because it's a different siphon to the one you've put in, you'll no doubt have to adjust it and have to faff around like I did um, and get it off. There's a little bar there from the handle coming backwards that you can see I've got my pliers on at the moment and there's the bit at the back that's actually got some holes in which you can adjust it. Now normally that would push in and you put the little nut in the top and tighten it up but because it's been in a tank of water it's obviously corroded and rusted and things like that and it's a pain to get off it just won't come out at all so i to like scratch all the lime scale and rubbish away from it and try and get it out i need to drop it back and put it in the next hole once i can actually get it off It's just actual pain and it just would not budge at all. I was just cleaning it with a screwdriver there because there was lime scale build up and everything. And this must have been like 10, 15 minutes. I've super speeded this up. This is like 10, 15 minutes of faffing around trying to get it. And you don't want to force it too much because you don't want to break it. You can replace that part if you want, but it was in good condition. It, it was just stuck on, it just wouldn't budge. You know when you're pulling these things off you're finally you know almost there with it you can feel it moving it's slightly moving now and coming off slowly and in the end eventually it does finally come off like so, so i'm just cleaning the metal off there with a bit of sandpaper get rid of all the lime scale and rubbish off it and slide it back in the next slot there as you can see there's a couple of holes on that and the next one that means it will, will line up with the metal hook and I can set the metal hook in place and it will line up perfectly the next bit I'm doing now here is just get, getting it on correctly and, and lining it up really which is also another tricky bit because obviously it's a different one than was on there before so you've got to do some slight adjustments uh, putting it in the right hole and making sure you can get the hook on and making sure it moves around just put it on the wrong way there at first and realized ah, I put it on the wrong way I need to swap it around the other way otherwise you'll be flushing upwards but I have actually seen in some people's houses um, a toilet that flushes upwards and that just means like that they've put it on the wrong way around but I was just putting that on there the wrong way around to really show you how you would do an upward flush if you wanted but why we want it as a downward flush like that so just spin it around like so unless you want the handle up in the air like that and then when you push it down it will flush like so I need to put the tank back onto the wall now really checking that everything it does look all right when you put it on and I just need to put those final two little bolts in at the bottom those are the ones that um, will go into the toilet base so there's uh, two bolts and two washers I've just put on there lift it back on and slide it in it should go in perfect if everything lines up correctly Need to tighten the bolts up each side underneath the toilet now um, start them off by hand they are like wing nut type bolts so you start them off by hand so they seem like they take forever again it's speeded up so they do take forever and then you'll need to probably just tighten them with a um, an adjustable wrench something like that just to get them tight you know use your pliers to uh, tighten them up Left hand 
side the one's a bit of a pain because it's uh, very hard to reach on this particular toilet you haven't got much room to move around also got to tighten up uh, the overflow pipe on the left hand side as well that's the next job once I've got this uh, nut tightened up here switched over to the left hand side again and do the overflow pipe now which again just start off by hand and I'm tightening up the water inlet pipe now on the right hand side just underneath there putting a new screw into the wall for the toilet there at the top brand new screw so uh, that's screwed into the wall so I've just got to adjust and tighten that water inlet pipe there and putting a bit of PTFE tape on it as you can see in my hand there um, just to wrap it around and make a tight connection on the pipe because it's um, a copper connection on this toilet going into a plastic one and they have a tendency to twist or bend slightly when you tighten them up particularly if they're older type a few final visual inspection checks check everything to make sure it's all looks good before you turn the water on you don't want to be turning the water on and have it leak so you've got to make sure everything's tightened up and looks good and then we can turn the water on we can start filling the tank up with water while you're doing this of course you've got to be checking for any leaks particularly from the water inlet on the right hand side of this toilet that I've just done because obviously as soon as you turn that cut off valve on it's going to start leaking you've also got to check the toilet itself to make sure that uh, no water is leaking because it could leak from the inlet at the bottom um, where your water's coming in it could also leak from where we've put the coupling kit it isn't setting on correctly for some reason um, obviously just get some tissue ready to wipe any excess water off uh, to make sure it doesn't uh, leak of course when you first turn the cold water on it's been off for a while it does sort of feel a bit condensation so it's best to wipe that pipe joint and clean it off make sure there's no water coming out of it it's filling up okay at the moment the tank is no leaks obviously it's got to fill that entire tank so it is going to take um, probably a minute or two in reality to fill that tank up completely with water now I was going to clean the tank out and scrub it down and everything up so it's no I think it was running a bit late on time in the day so I didn't really have the chance to do that so it uh, still looks a bit messy inside but I did clean all the rubbish out all sorts of bits of rubbish that uh, you get in those tanks and the uh, final bit of water is now going into that uh, tank and you can, uh, once it reaches the line at the top which you can just about see if you can see in the video the blue thing in the middle of the tank which is the new siphon and there's a little water line to the right of that you can see the water slowly going up there and it will reach the water line and it'll eventually stop and we can do a few test flushes to make sure it flushes the toilet correctly again constantly doing visual checks looking for any leaks you know you flush the toilet things like that is it leaking is it all okay gotta be 100% sure that there's no leaks 
and you're happy with everything. All's looking good on this now, everything's working and I'm happy there's no leaks. The only problem I had to do, as I'd say, is put a bit of extra PTFE tape around that inlet pipe because that uh, first time I tightened it up it did leak a little bit so I had to put, uh, I just unscrewed it, put some PTFE tape on, tightened it up and it was happy again. So just checking under the toilet now and everywhere there. Everywhere looks good, job well done. The uh, siphon and coupling kit has been replaced on this toilet. So there we go everybody, it's all finished and um, basically the job is now done. So the new siphon was fitted and the new coupling kit below. Um, as you saw on the video, I had to adjust the handle um, very slightly as well um, in order to line up on the new siphon. Um, getting a screw out the wall was a bit of pain and of course getting the handle off was a bit difficult. But there you go, it's all done, finished and... now working flush it and there we go it will now flush straight away and fill up straight away so thanks for watching this video everybody please um, like share and uh, drop any comments i'm not a plumber by trade so please don't ask me any plumbing questions um i just uh, basically self-taught myself how to do various jobs like this so there you go that's that's all done Yes, I know there's only one screw in um, holding the toilet on at the moment. I've just got to put um, th another screw in at the other side there. Just need a slightly longer one that I've got to dig out of the garage. But there you go, all done. Any questions, please like, comment, share. And uh, don't forget, if you're watching on um, YouTube, please give us a subscribe. If you're on Instagram, please follow us. Thanks for watching this video.